One movie will have your heart racing and keep you on the edge of your seat. Based on true events, the Mothman Pro. Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to end the video? There's another paid request. This time for Curtis. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, commentaries, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the Mothman Prophecies from 2002, which I really enjoy. And I wish you did get a Blu-ray in the U.S. I mean, you didn't get a Blu-ray, but it's overseas and it's a bit spendy. But that's, I'm surprised that's a film like Stream Factory or... Arrow Video, or like some other company didn't get their hands on and re-release. Maybe with new bonus features. I mean, it's a film that I remember back in the day. There's this thing with school where I guess around that time, like after the Christmas season, like some type of thing where they were taped kids to the movie theater and they did that very very rarely I know at one point it was around the time when Sa Saving Silverman came out and then there's a point where it did it with this movie because remember it was Orange County was in the theater with Jack Black in this movie and I remember being annoyed in the theater because I was trying to get into the film because I like this kind of stuff and the other kids in school were just laughing at the film because, no disrespect, most kids at my school, if they're into films, they were into like Adam Sandler. Nothing wrong with Adam Sandler, but it was like only Adam Sandler and really nothing else. If I tried to talk to anybody about movies, I would talk about like Tremors 2 and people would think I'm making it up. Oh yeah, what's that? Tremors five? I'm like, actually, yes. Actually, there was a Tremors six and Tremors seven. There's been seven of those movies, and a TV show, and a pilot that never got picked up with Kevin Bacon. So I couldn't enjoy the film in the theater. Like, there's a bit of Richard Deere cries, which I didn't think was laughable, but you know, everyone's laughing, and again, they were just bored. It wasn't the kind of film they wanted. I mean, if this was like. You just, it just wasn't. They didn't want, you know, this is a very slow, but not boring. <laughs> Sorry, I'm knocking all my camera around. I'm pissed about, no. It's not boring at all. To me, it's a, I don't know if to call it a slow burn. It's a very atmospheric, viscerally edited, Porter Force of directing, in my opinion. Like, I thought Mark Pillington directed the hell out of this movie. And I would say this is like a good, really good X-Files movie. Like, if Richard Deere was Mulder and Laura Lenny was Scully, this would have been a fantastic X-Files movie. As it is, it's a pretty damn good supernatural horror thriller. Because Richard Deere... I like Richard Deere. I thought he, he... It was nice to see him in this kind of movie. It was very rare for him to do this kind of role. I thought he really showcased the grief because his wife dies by sad circumstances. It's been years later. And one day he's, for his job, driving from point A to point B. And then he doesn't know where he's at. And he realizes somehow he's traveled like across the state in a matter of like an hour and a half. And he doesn't know how the hell that happened. And it's all these mysterious circumstances happening in this small town. And trying to figure out what's going on. And it takes place in West Virginia. He teams up with the police officer played by Laura Lenny, who I remember from Congo, among other movies. You have Will Patton in the film, who was in Armageddon, and many other movies. Uh, I thought the cast worked well, and like I said, the director did his job, and then some. What do I mean by that? With the way he incorporated the sound design, and these creepy phone calls, with how certain way scenes are framed, with the way it's directed, 
where even early on there's this car accident that's viscerally edited. Uh, the subtle, really creepy atmosphere store, which I think is, was it Tom and Dandy who did the Hills of Eyes remake? I don't remember who did the store, but I thought it was very effective. And there's like really a lot of interesting scene transitions and camera angles. And there are times where it feels like it's in like a point of view of something else. Like a lot of the movie with either these sweeping shots or there's a bit where Richard Deere gets a phone call and he runs across his catwalk and it's like from this weird perspective. I didn't like a lot of points in the movie something is watching the proceedings. Maybe the Mothman himself. And a lot of that is done throughout this movie where it's just a really visually interesting film. And I think the director did a nice job capturing this eerie atmosphere feel and look to the film. I mean, the, the movie is rich in atmosphere. The story, because it's, I don't want to say it's ambiguous, but it's, it doesn't give concrete answers on the Mothman, and maybe some people will get mad about that, because it's this figure that gives these hazy predictions and prophecies of tragic events, and you have Richard Deere and Laura Lady that try to figure out what's going on, Will Patton keeps hearing these voices, and then Richard Deere keeps he had these creepy phone calls. Hey, what's in my hand? Chapstick. Yeah. And then it's also a story about a guy trying to deal with the grief of the death of his wife and learning to let go. I thought Richard Deere did a stellar job, whether you like the guy or not personally. Acting wise, I thought he did a nice job. He did a nice job showcasing that. You know, even early on with the wife going, I want you to be happy. Which is funny because once in a while it reminded me a little bit of this. Because the lead guy, his inner turmoil, the death of his wife. Like that line, I want you to be happy. That screams like... If you never played this game, there's a big reveal of... <laughs> I'll just put it that way. When that happened, it reminded me of that game. I'll just be as vague as that. I did. It's just like the director. He knew what he wanted to do. Like there's a a bit where Richard Deere walks out. It's like this abandoned, burned up factory, and he's reminded of a scene from before. And that scene is like framed along the concave of the remnants of this factory. And to me it doesn't create intrigue. Now again, kind of like an X-Files episode, it doesn't give you concrete answers as to who the Mothman you know, is. It's a shadowy figure... They look at the, the recordings and someone determines it's not human vocal cords causing this. The figure gives itself a name as Ingrid Cold. And it's hard to va value what their motivations are. They aren't human type of motivations. It's unknown. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, you're more advanced than a cockroach. Would you try to explain to a cockroach? So, again, some people may be wanting more of either a creature feature action film. It's not that. Maybe they were wanting like a gore movie. It's not that. They wanted more concrete answers. I thought that it's more vague than that. I thought that all worked into the film's benefit for what the director was trying to achieve. Uh, I do think it worked out better for that reason. And if you're background noise, there's people out there like doing work and stuff. Yeah, I know these walls are thin. Uh, just how it is. But 
I say it's a very well staged, like well directed movie, and it's Mark Pellington who did that. Now he had done the film called Arlington Road, which I wasn't a fan of. Just, just wasn't a fan of the twist. Just a personal preference thing. It's not a badly directed film. Again, just personal preference. Idea why it was done. I just again, we all have our personal preferences. Just that just wasn't mine. And then after this, he didn't really do a whole lot. And this film made a little bit of money. It was a blockbuster, but I think it made a little bit of change. Considering it came out, what, January or so? Give or take. But yeah, like I said, I like the... the it does create a nice atmosphere for the proceedings of this... To make you feel like this otherworldly figure is watching you. I did with certain a team is like the certain camera angles used in sequences. Even early on when he's talking with his wife and there's like a camera angle like behind a curtain peeking through. It really gives the feel of you know, you're being watched, like that type of thing, by this it, and that's the thing, is it a demon? Is it an alien? Is it an angel? Is it something else entirely? I did. It doesn't answer those questions, and I'm fine with that because if you give an answer in this instance, it's like it would be disappointing. Like that's it. Now the film. I think there's maybe about. Maybe 10 minutes in the middle. That could be truncated a bit. Which is about an hour and 50 some minutes. I, I do think there's little bits in the middle. Where it gets maybe a bit. Redundant. In the proceedings. And it could move along a little bit of a. Better. Pace. But I'm still. Interested. And it's been a while since I've seen the film. And. Uh, maybe I'll try to get that Blu-ray. This is a film I would like to see get remastered in 4K. Because it would look great in 4K. It would look fantastic in 4K, I think. And I thought the cast did a good job. Like Richard Gere, his frustration, seeing him slowly losing his mind. You know, this bits of, like, there's a bit where he's in a bathroom... And he imagines himself like crashes his head into a damn mirror and he snaps out of it. And it's just with the grief of his wife and this thing like driving him crazy and trying to solve this riddle. And if are we able to stop these catastrophes? Are we not? And even one guy goes, We're not meant to understand. And again, you don't know the motivations. Maybe they're just fucking with you, maybe they're just being a, a troll. You never know, maybe the Mothman's just a big fucking troll. <laughs> Sati, you can't do anything. I don't tell what's going to happen. You can't do shit. <laughs> and to me, it was a story about a guy letting go of his grief and moving on. And that resulted in achieving something. To spoil alert. The, the phone call is asked in, hey, be here, you'll get this phone call, you'll talk to your wife again. And then Laura Lenny, she calls before, goes, hey, you know what, no matter what, that's not going to be her. It may sound like her. Listen, I'll put the offer out there. You want to come by? It's around you know, Christmas time. We'll open in presents. We'd love to see you. Take care. And yeah, I thought Laura Lenny... Look at that. Two people working together, a guy and a girl, and no one is going, I'm better than you. Richard Deere's not being cocky asshole. Laura Lenny's not being butch. I'm better than men. It's just two people who work well together, who are working with each other, and that was very nice. I thought they, was, they did a really good job together. And there's enough intrigue and mystery to keep my attention. And 
Richard Deere lets go. I said spoilers. Goes up and gets to be part just the part where there's this bridge that's pretty backed up and he realizes that the catastrophe he thought was this power plant but it's really this bridge and it's a very well directed set piece I mean this not like it cost a tremendous amount of money but they make it look like this bridge really does break apart and people fall into their deaths and you know, he saves Laura Lenny's character now I never, it never says like how many people were supposed to die, at least thirty seven. Because the the guy says thirty six died, and then Laura Letty like freaks out, because she remembers something she told Richard Deere way back when that she had this weird dream, where this voice says wake up thirty seven. So, Richard Deere was able to save her. But who knows? I mean, that could have been 37 out of 40. Could it be 37 out of 47. Maybe Richard Deere and them warning, maybe they helped more people out. I don't know. Maybe not. But he at least did save Laura Lenny. So something was achieved. So again, if you're looking, maybe people looking for a film that's more definitive, more defined, and here's a problem, it gets solved. It gets stopped, the creature gets killed, exercise, whatever. This is more of just, this is just a, like, it's like an X-Files episode. A lot of them, it's just an experience these two go through. And sometimes there are concrete endings, sometimes they're not, where they survived and, like, Richard Deere saved her, but... Is there a finite conclusion to who the and what the Mothman was? No. But I do think it's effective in creating its atmosphere. Like I said, it's effective in creating its... It's just a really good-looking movie. It's an eerie film. I wouldn't call it scary, but I'm not really scared by most movies. Just how it is with me. His real life is scarier than movies. But yeah, it, it does a great job invoking that tension. And like I said, it's a good looking film. I like when directors, yes, yeah, sometimes it could be a bit too much, but for a film like this, I like the director, I did what the director was going for. I like that he wasn't just set the camera up, roll, move on. But I just feel that like he put a lot of work into this. Again, like the weird sound designs or certain things. Like early on, there's a bit where Richard Deere, this is after his wife has died, he's sitting on a bench, and the camera's like really far away behind him. And then a camera like going towards him. Again, as if he's being watched or as if something's coming towards him. Again, it gives that sense of. Not paranoia, but the sense of something is off in this world. So yeah, I thought it was an intriguing. You know, it's just based on a true story. I never really buy into that crap because who? It could be very, very loosely. It could be one sentence that's true. Then they go, it's based on a true story, because this one sentence, it's like, whatever. They really hampered on that in the marketing, which I think was annoying. But yeah, the Mothman Prophecies, always enjoyed it. I always thought it was underrated. If I will say, it's an underrated film. Because the credits didn't really give it much leeway when it came out. It made a little bit of money, but it's, it's a film no one talked about. How many people mentioned the Mothman Prophecies? Like I said, it doesn't have a special edition Blu-ray. At least not in the U.S., I should say. In the Blu-ray, I don't know if you need a region-free player or what. If you own it, you can let me know. You know, something I would like to pick up sometime. Uh, but I guess, uh, you know, I'll be honest. A reason I haven't picked it up is because I'm still hoping that some somewhere in the U.S. it gets released. Because, yes, I do have a region-free Blu-ray player, 
But I hate having to fucking change the damn thing and wait, make sure it's changed and pop the disc in. It's like, come on, let it be released in the U.S. I think it was in the U.S. at one point, but it's you can't find. It. I don't know if actually I don't know if it ever got to the U.S. If it did, it's out of print. But come on, let's let's get this back on the market. It can even be a 4K Blu-ray pack. Let's do that. Come on now. But yeah, Botham Prophecies, underrated film in my opinion. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.